Hello, today we're going to be talking about the normal distribution and this is section 6.2 in your book. We've discussed the normal distribution a little bit at the beginning. If you remember it's the bell-shaped curved, bell-shaped curve. And on your own I want you to review the 68959997 rule, also known as the empirical rule. Okay? Um, but now let's look actually look at the curve. If you know the two parameters of the normal distribution are the mean and the standard deviation, what happens when I change the mean? And what happens when I change the standard deviation? Well, here is a, oops, I'm sorry, wrong one. Here is a um, applet showing what happens when we change the mean and standard deviation. I'll post this on Blackboard so you can play around with this yourself. So the mean here is 4.8 and the standard deviation is um, 0.6. Now if I change the mean, it shifts the graph right if I increase the mean and it shifts the graph to the left if I decrease the mean. This makes sense because we know the mean is the center of the distribution so shifting the graph left and right will change the will shift um, I'm sorry shift changing the mean will shift the graph left and right and changing the standard deviation well if the standard deviation is large then the graph gets wide which means more spread in the data and if the standard deviation is small then this means that there's less spread in the data and the curve gets tight okay and that is our regular uh, so let's write that down Whoops. So if we're ch changing the mean, it shifts the graph left and right, and changing the standard deviation, changing the standard deviation changes the shape of the curve. Or of the graph. Okay? One thing that's very important that I want you to know is that the total area under the curve, under this curve, okay, equals 1 for 100%, but this is also equal to the uh, total probability. This is very important because this says that there exists a correspondence between BTWN, between the area under the curve and the probability. This is very important. There exists a correspondence between the area under the curve and the probability. We can find both using the norm CDF function on the calculator, which I will show you. Okay? So the norm CDF function on the calculator, uh, you want to put in the lower limit, the upper limit, the mean and the standard deviation, okay? And caution, do not, not use PDF. So don't use norm PDF. Remember when we did the binomial, we used uh, PDF and CDF, but for the normal distribution, we are only going to be using the CDF, okay? Let's do some examples. Uh, this is in your book on page 250. Okay, and uh, I can shut this off. I don't need that. So we have the standard normal distribution, and let's look at number nine. Okay, so the graph depicts the standard normal distribution. If you remember, the standard normal has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and z equals 0.75. Here they're telling you that the area under the curve is 
um, oh no, I'm sorry, Z is the z-score is 0.75. So find the area under the curve. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So I have this and they tell me Z equals 0.75. And again, my curve is normal with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Okay. So this is number 9. I want to do norm CDF. Okay, lower limit. Lower limit is um, the smallest number that you can go. So I just pick a really small number. So like negative 50. Okay. And the upper limit, where's my upper limit? Where is it stopping? It's stopping at 0.75. So essentially my Z, I'm looking at the area between negative 50 and 0.75 the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 okay so that's what's given to me here so I can take this and plug this into the calculator and you want to go to second vars and the second option is norm CDF and you type in exactly this negative 50 comma 0.7 oops let me do 0 0.75 comma 0 comma 1 you hit enter and you get 0 0.7733 which is roughly or what was it 77 7734 so 77 point thirty four percent so this is saying 77 point thirty four percent of the data of the data is below uh, z equals 0.75 or what's the probability that you're going to pick something that has a z-score below 0.75? It's 77.34 percent. Okay. Let's look at number 11. Now number 11 is at looking between negative 0.6 and 1.2. Okay. Negative 0.6 and 1.2. So I have my normal curve here again. Again, the center is 0, so negative 0.6 is here, and 1.2 is here, and I want between this. So again, I'm going to do norm CDF. Between negative 0.6 and 1.2, those are my lower and upper limits, the mean is 0, the standard deviation is 1. Okay? So let me go back to my calculator, hit second bars, number two, and I want between negative 0.6 comma 1.2 comma mean comma standard deviation, and I get 61.07%. So 61. 0.07% or 61% of the data is between between negative 0.6 and 1.2. Okay, so if you're given the z-score and you find want to find the area, then you use the norm CDF function. What about the other way around? What if I give you the uh, area so if you are given the area under the curve or the probability remember they're the same thing and you want to find you need to find the z-score then what you want to use is use the inverse norm function inverse norm and the parameters of the inverse norm function are the uh, area to the left so it's the left area whoops what is happening with my pen it's the area to the left it's the mean and it's the standard deviation okay it says left area mean and standard deviation 
So for example, let's take a look at number 13. So it's giving me, again, it's a normal distribution with mean 0 and 1, and it's giving me that the area is 0 0.9798. So I want to use um, inverse norm. The area to the left, let's look at it again. So the area to the left is 0 0.9798. So I have this, I have this. So that's my area to the left. The mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. And let me go back to my, and I hit second vars, inverse norm, point nine seven nine eight, comma, mean comma standard deviation hit enter and we get 2.05 so with uh, area of 0.9798 that means my z score is going to be 2.05 and what are the units for the z score now some people say the units for the z, uh, z score is a number so there aren't any units, but I like to think that the units for the z-score are standard deviations. That's telling you that it's 2.0, whatever your data is, 97.98% is below 2.05 standard deviations above the mean. Here the mean is zero. Okay. Let's look at number 15. Point one zero seven five is the area to the right. So we gotta be a little bit careful here. It's point one zero. Seven five is the area to the right. To use the inverse norm function, I gotta use find the area to the left. So I need to do one minus that. So if I do 1 minus 0 0.1075, I get 0 0.8925. And 0 0.8925 is the area to the left. So 89.25% on the left is the same thing as 10.75 on the right, because both of these added together give me 1 or 100. So now I can do the inverse norm function. 0.8925 comma so this is 0.8925 comma mean and standard deviation it just so happens that these problems are dealing with the standard normal distribution so the mean is 0 and 1 but you can use the inverse norm and the norm cdf functions for any normal distribution so if you're even if your mean and standard deviation are not 0 and 1 you can still use these functions uh, which makes it really helpful because you don't have to worry about using the um, formulas or the tables in the back of the book. So I want to do second bars, inverse norm, point eight, oh come on, nine, two, five, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation, and I hit enter, and I get roughly 1.24. Okay, so this means that the z-score is 1.24, which makes sense with the picture, right? We know the center is zero, and 50% of the data is in the middle, or 50% above, 50% below, so obviously 89.25% of the data is going to be below some point which is way greater than zero. Okay, and uh, let's do one last one. Let me look at number 21. Okay, so again I'm looking at a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. 
find the probability that uh, the thermometer reading is greater than 2.22. Okay, so I want to find the probability. Now when your mean is 0, your standard deviation is 1, essentially they're giving you a z-score. And you want a z-score greater than 2.22. Okay, so again we have our area. My z-score is here, 2.22, and I want to find this area. Okay, so it helps to draw a little picture first. Now that picture was not given to me. I drew it based on what the problem said. The z-score is 2.22, and they want the area greater than 2.22, okay? So this is problem number 21. So I'm given the, just, I'm given the uh, z-score, and I want to find the area. So I'm going to use the norm CDF function. And my lower limit is 2.22. And the upper limit. Well, I want to go from 2.22 up to a really big number. So put in something like 100. Okay, just a really big number. Comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. Okay, so when you put this in, and we do vars, I'm sorry, second vars, second variables. Number 2 is norm CDF. 2.22 comma 100 comma mean comma standard deviation <coughs> enter excuse me I get roughly 1.32 percent so maybe my picture really isn't accurate it really should look something like this 1.32% of the data is greater than 2.22 um, or the probability that the thermometer reading is above 2.22 is 1.32%. Okay, so I hope this uh, explains a little bit about the normal distribution and how to find uh, probabilities and z-scores. In the next video we'll go more into depth about applications of the normal distribution and how to do these problems when the mean is not 0 and 1. Okay, thank you for watching and if you have any questions feel free to send me an email, give me a call or drop on by. Okay, thanks.